Hi guys, I'm Oliver Lundy. I'm a photographer from the UK. And in this video, I'm gonna be going through a photo shoot that I did with this very yellow and very awesome Lambo. And I'm gonna be taking you through this shot, this shot, and this shot, how I got them, my thinking behind them, and the final edits. So the situation with this one was I had uh, a good few hours to shoot with this car, but the weather was pretty terrible. So we had an overcast day and there was the possibility of rain. So we had to go somewhere that was gonna be uh, safe and ideally had some cover. Luckily, one of my local spots is an indoor car park and the roof is actually open. And um, so if we had the kind of best of both worlds, depending on the weather, uh, I also particularly like this location for this first photo it's an upper level shot so you can shoot you can put the car on a ramp that goes down to the next level and then shoot it from the level above this is the final image but if i take you back i can show you the raw image so on the left here this is the the image straight out of camera the car's got a really cool um uh, sort of in internal wrap on the windscreen that gives this kind of iridescent blue look and also the reason why i love this kind of angle is that you don't often see a kind of semi bird's eye vertical view without having to get a drone out so it's a really cool shot and also the um the kind of dark gray um gritty textured surface of the car park ends up looking quite good once you kind of clean it up a bit so that was the straight out of camera edit then this is the the base edits that i've done on the right which is just to get the kind of visual aesthetic that i'm after I'm not going to go too much into the actual settings but if you want to see them that's there so a little bit of curve and some color adjustments um and then just sharpening and lens correction so there's no nothing all that crazy i have used uh, a few filters in order to you know adjust the lighting slightly just to bring out the brightness of the subject and to add a little bit more um like a 3D element where I've sort of lit up the, the top right corner and darkened down the bottom left to give it some kind of depth. But then here's the final image, which as you can see, what I've done is I've just cleaned up the um, all of the painting, uh, you know, the paint lines on the tarmac. And I've just gone in and done everything I would normally do, which is going to be removing distractions, cleaning up any of the uh, issues with the car, uh, a little bit of dodging and burning just to highlight the shapes of this particular car and uh, and then just a final uh, primp and making sure that everything is is where i want the exposure to be so overall a nice easy one to get going straight off of the rip and it's not actually all that dissimilar from the straight out of camera shot um the later ones that we'll get to are quite a lot different okay so shot number two so this was actually shot out on the roof while we had some um clear skies well, i say clear skies not raining and this is what's known as a Brennheiser. So this is where I'm shooting on an 85 mil at 1.2 to get that really nice shallow depth of field. But I'm taking multiple images as I, without moving, so that I can stack them together into this final image and you get a much wider view, but you still get the compression of an 85. So, so out of camera, you can see that it looked quite a lot different and there was quite a lot of distracting elements. So my car, and the uh, lines in the road and also these lamps and so on so now that i've you know the, and once i've got rid of those you can see it's a much cleaner image and i've also done a sky replacement just to add a little bit more mood to the clouds and then also just put in a little bit of haze behind the car just to help it pop out that a little bit more so the before and after on this one is pretty pretty big i really like the angle that this car sits at now so this is a front three quarter and if i show you this image here this is the same exact position of the car in the same exact location but just taken with with a standard 85 mil without doing a brenheiser and as you can see it makes a massive difference to the overall image like the 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 whole perspective changes and i much prefer the wider flatter look um, 
of the final image than I do over this one. So to totally different. Brennheiser's are a really, really good way of getting a really interesting look from uh, a situation like this. And then finally, the, the, the crazy one. So we decided to do some light painting and we had to wait for it to get dark for that to work, but it, it did. And so what I've done is I've taken a, a, a base image or a plate image. If you've, if you've ever done light painting, what you need to do is take a dark image that you're gonna use for your base. You're gonna put your camera on a tripod and then not move it the whole time. And then you're gonna use a light of some description to light up the car doing a long exposure. And then you blend them all in Photoshop afterwards to get the final image that you want. So in this instance, this was my base base image, just a dark image where the background's kind of as with exposed to, to the, the way that I want it to be. And now I've done a series of passes with my light wand where I've walked behind the car in a specific pattern. And then I've done a few different passes at different heights so that I get a few different options when I'm blending them all together in post. And then I've done one where I'm focus more on the car and then another one for the wheels and then all of that together ends up looking like this and then I've put a little bit of atmosphere and smoke in the background just to give the image some extra oomph so uh, light painting is really good fun it's a really uh, it gives a completely different look to anything that you'd be able to get with natural light and it makes the car pop out really nicely which is also cool um, and it's just fun to do, um, you know, waiting the sort of, you know, doing the long exposure and then waiting to see how it all comes out uh, is is good fun. And it's something that uh, if you can do it, then uh, it's not something that the average typical photographer is going to want to do. The only downside of it is that it can take a while to actually set up everything, do a light pass, review it, do another one, because you're talking about 10 to 30 second exposure times um, each time. And so, you know, you're going to soak up a fair bit of your shoot time doing this. Um, but as you can see, the results are, are pretty powerful. So it's, it's worth having a go at if you can. So I've got a bunch of other shots uh, during this session, um, but these are the three that I wanted to highlight for this video. Um, I hope it's been useful for you to sort of hear, um, you know, why I chose certain decisions, why I prefer certain methods uh, and uh, how you can effectively get quite a few cool shots just from one location. And uh, if you're restricted because you don't have good weather and you don't and you're restricted to one location, you can use these methods and these ideas to try and get some good images uh, despite the restrictions that you've got on the day. Um, and hope this has been useful for you. If it has, drop me a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will see you in the next one.